Hey guys, how's it going? We are standing near the pond where we are gonna be doing some planting today, but I just wanted to walk you guys through. Paul and Bethany, as you just saw, finished up the mulch in this area and it looks so beautiful. I just honestly wanna stand back and marvel at it. We gotta do that every once in a while throughout the season, just taking a look at how far this space has come and how things like a fresh layer of compost will just make all the plants pop and it makes them all look lush and healthy. I love it. So we're standing right outside in the lane. You can see the gravel lane here. I wanted to give you a backed up look. You can see a thundercloud plum blooming over there in the distance. And then right in the front of this berm, we planted some anemones, which not very many of them came up. And I don't really know what the deal is with that, but it looks really good still. I love the little you know, occasional pop of color, and it almost looks a little bit more natural to have it that way. And with this area, that is my goal, to keep it more natural looking, looking like something that we would find in uh, the mountains just, you know, an hour away from our house. I wanted it to feel like that because that's one of my favorite places to go, is to go on day trips up to the hills, find a creek somewhere and just sit and enjoy it. So I didn't want any formal plantings in this area, no roses, no like super bright, big drifts of things you know i just wanted it to look a little bit more sporadic a little bit more of a natural plant choice so the fact that they came up like they did kind of lends itself to that look i think so anyway and then we've got thalia daffodils and douglas he's our entryway ornament today look at how beautiful these are pick these out on purpose because they come out with like two or three blooms per stalk look at this and they're just simple and pure white and I think they look a little bit more natural than like your great big bright yellow daffodils, if that makes sense. Look at this over here though. This stone is so pretty with all of the lichens on it. We planted this little mugo pine last year and I hope it does okay here. I planted it late and we didn't run any drip to it and haven't yet, but whenever we get rain and we've had so much rain, so much moisture, all the water pools in this area right at the base of this berm it's like a pond in, a, in and of itself and the pine is sitting right there in the middle of it so i'm thinking well maybe we just don't run drip to it and just let it get water whenever we get a deluge like that and maybe it'll be happy that way but this little scene with the blooming tree in the background which we planted that when the triangular shaped garden was still here that was in the corner of it the far corner so i love that that's still here i love the new little stump not little big stump that we put over there week, last week, maybe the week before. Never in my life did I think I would ever be excited about stumps in my garden, but let me tell you what, I just love this space. I love the boulders, I love the berms, and I love the stumps. So let's walk in this way, taking a look at a few of the things we put in last year. The Semper Vivums, right here. Russian Sage is pushing new growth. We just planted the Star Creepers recently. They're doing great so far. And I'm noticing all the trees are budding out, like they're, the buds are swollen, so we should see some leaves here soon. On this side of the walkway, we've got a giant oak tree. And we have another one on that side, which eventually they'll be big, along with we've got some Princess Diana service berries and there's birch trees kind of surrounding the area. So eventually we'll have shade over here, which will help tremendously with the amount of algae that's that will want to grow in the water. Shaded ponds just do better. Uh, but when you're creating an area like this from scratch, where there's nothing, I mean, it was all flat and there were no trees in here until about July of last year. Uh, so you're just gonna have a sunny pond area until your trees have a chance to mature. And we just kind of have to wait. We put in as big ones <laughs> as we could. We've got Catoniasters. There's three of them in here and they're called Little Dipper. And I'm hopeful that they will kind of spread out and go over the edges of the, these uh, stones just to kind of soften it. Tons of snow drops, so we're just leaving the foliage up until they start to die back. There's an Angel Falls pine right here, which I think is really pretty. The Serbian spruce trees are doing great out here. We've got an Aronia, a Sesky dwarf gold birch right up here. There's red twig dogwoods. Not a lot to see yet. I mean, the Aronia has started to leaf. You can see that. The buds are swollen on that shrub. I can see leaves kind of starting to form here. It's just, uh, you know, early spring. That's the look. And I'm excited about all of this stuff. You know, we've got iris planted here, Russian sage that comes up and there's a short one. So it won't get massive. And there's little bulbs, you know, daffs coming up here. There were snowdrops in bloom right along the walkway. And this little pine is called a Joe's Bess. And no matter what I do, it looks like it's leaning, doesn't it? Does it look like it's kind of, I have tried to come out here and 
like even right after I freshly planted it last year and I tried to tip it. Well, like from this angle, it looks good. I don't know, maybe I'm being too fussy. I love that little tree. But I feel like from, yeah, from certain angles, it looks like it's leaning. Maybe the trunk, the trunk isn't super straight. I don't know. But look at what a beautiful job they do with the mulch. Oh, it's so pretty. We've got low grow sumacs. Uh, there's several of them in this area. There's a weeping blue spruce. The crab apple's going for it. This is a royal raindrops, full of buds. We should have some really beautiful color here soon. But not only the blooms, look at the color of the park. It's burgundy and it's so pretty. Hey, be gentle on the plants, Douglas. I love this whole look. Just scanning this whole area, it's so beautiful. Here's Russell getting a drink. We've got a variegated red twig dogwood right here. And there's some geraniums, which those are evergreen. So they've looked good all throughout the season. We've got um, ornamental grasses that are coming back. Like up in here, we've got a procumbens blue spruce, which this one has the potential to get quite large. So I'm hoping it kind of goes over the edges a bit to where we can see it up from the front of the pond area eventually. These right here were kind of the crowning glory of this whole space. These are the Blonde Ambition Blue Grandma Grass. They grow like two to three feet tall and they have the most unique looking seed heads. They almost look like praying mantis, um, but they had such an impact up here at the top of the pond. I mean, when we got the whole thing done, you know, when the whole crew was here, we had everything planted and we were just sitting here that evening looking at everything. That was the plant that everyone was like, that's it. That's the perfect plant. And it really is. It made it makes the stone up here feel like it's tucked in and it just looks so natural. So those are all around this big boulder. And you can see the Princess Diana service berries just about ready to pop. So pretty and gorgeous fall color. Let's go around this way. Oh, real quick, the basketball hoop. We have ordered the new ones, which you can adjust down to five feet. And uh, we did it for two reasons. One, because we want the kids to actually be able to use them. Right now, the rim sits at 10 feet, six inches. That's so high. And Benjamin has made one basket and he was so proud of himself, but it is hard uh, for him. It's hard for me to get a ball up to <laughs> that, that height, to lob it that far. So to be able to lower the rim, uh, the whole thing, the backboard and everything, so that um, you know the kids can use it is wonderful, but it also will be lowered far enough to where it will not be the backdrop of the pond anymore. Can't wait. Okay, I just love walking through here. Isn't this pretty? Look through there at the blooming tree. See little peak of the Hartley over there, which eventually we want this to be kind of an area that's secluded and it's like this private little oasis in here so that when you're driving by, you might be able to like kind of peek through at certain spots and see back in here. But like the whole berm area, I want it to be fairly solid. I think that'll be really pretty. We've got a Jacqueline Hillier Elm right here. I'm happy to see it's looking good this spring. Another variegated red twig dogwood. And there are some perennials like Joe Pie Weed right in here, which is a very natural looking perennial and it's the shorter variety. And there's like seven of them. Can't see them right now because we've cut them back, but we've got lots of space to work with still over here. Lots. Here's a look from this side. We've got a coral berry that's supposed to get like 10 feet wide. That little shrub should fill up this space quite a lot. A little pine right in here. I think that one's the variety called Comet. On this side, there's our stump I love that we just recently brought over here. And a lilac we planted last, last year. It's all budded up. Happy to see that. Beautiful. Okay, so that's our little tour through the pond area. Oh my gosh, it's breezy and chilly. <laughs> and I hope that the audio is okay. But here are the two varieties we're gonna plant in this area, and then we're gonna take all those big old Virginias and plant them close to the house. But we've got the Mini Marvels Midnight, which is a little ground cover type Campanula that I love. Now this is a new variety for 2025, so I've not tried this particular variety before, but I do have other varieties that I just, I think are the sweetest plants. And even when they're not in bloom, they create this just nice little cushiony mound of foliage. And it's always a really pretty kind of glossy green. You can't see a tremendous amount of color yet. These are a tiny bit further along than the ones that I have out in our landscape already. We have the Periwinkle Popsicle Baptisia, which is a, a late, these are further along than mine out in the landscape, but they're a late spring, early sum, summer bloomer. And they kind of remind me of lupins in a way. 
especially once they're in full bloom. They remind me of something that I would see out in the meadow uh, when we're out hiking in the hills. Uh, so I feel like it's gonna be perfect for this space. And they grow about four by four. They come up fresh from the ground every year. You can see the new little growth shoots right here. So they come up like that fresh every year and then you cut back all the stalks either in the fall or in the early spring so that you can enjoy the fresh growth. But when they're done blooming, they've got just a really interesting leaf structure and they're just a nice soft green shrub. I keep calling these a shrub. They're not a shrub, they're a perennial, <laughs> but they do form kind of a shrub sort of shape. But let me show you what I'm thinking here. I want them to look a little tucked in and I wanted to plant one by the stump to kind of soften this side and I'm not gonna put all three of them together. The more things we put together in any kind of pattern, the more it will look contrived. So I'm thinking of popping the three just in random locations around the pond. Now the ground cover is a little bit different because I don't care if that forms kind of a nice little mat all together. So this one, yeah, right behind that stone, kind of to the side of it. And a third one. Oh, I think that's gonna look great. And then these others, we're gonna want them tucked in closer to the edge. So they can kind of fill in and maybe go over the edges of the stones a little bit. That's the idea. So I am going to place the rest of these campanulas. We'll get all of these in the ground and we'll take a look before we head up to the house with the Virginia. I took my time so that I didn't make a mess in the mulch and all the plants look really good where they ended up, I think. So the campanulas are right here on the left-hand side of the walkway. We've got two on this side of this boulder and one on the other side, and they should bloom late spring through late summer. So we should have some kind of color on these all throughout the season. And they grow, did I already mention, 10 to 12 inches wide. Um, so these two should fill in this area. I was gonna do a third, but I think the cotoneaster will take off and fill up the area to this side. And then one little one there to fill in that spot. I do have an organ grape that grows about four feet wide and I think two feet tall. So that should fill in this space. And then the other four are right here. There's sort of a grouping of three and then one down the way just a little bit. But I think that'll be a sweet little plant to just transition from the larger stones to our walkway. And then two of the Baptisia on this side. We've got one right here behind this stone and one over here. There are a whole bunch of perennial grasses. There's the Northern Sea Oats. There's five of them in this area. And I don't have anything up here yet, but eventually we'll have this area sort of filled in as well. And the other Baptisia on the other side, which of course with this one, there was a drip line running directly in the center of where I wanted to plant it. So I tucked it a little bit further back, but I think that's just gonna be the most beautiful little spring color back in here, and it will soften this side of the stump. Okay, we might be a little bit more protected from the wind where we're going next. Oh yeah. I think that would be beautiful. We could fit all five of them. So one, 
two, three, four, five. And I think that would be beautiful. And you would think, you know, back behind a boxwood hedge like this that you should do something taller, but you actually see it. Because you can see from my perspective right here, this is how we walk by the boxwood hedge. And you can totally see everything back behind it. And I was holding the camera up by my eyes just now, so you could kind of see what we see. And they're so bold. I think they'd just be beautiful back in here. And it's a little bit more protected too. So it, you know, I, I don't know, it might keep the leaves nicer, uh, especially during the winter. And this variety of Virginia, did I mention, it's called Peppermint Patty. And it's a new one for this year. Let me see if I can find a tag. Cause I want to say that it's supposed to grow like 18 inches tall and two feet wide. 18 inches, uh, no, 22 inches tall and 18 inches wide. So reversed of what I just said. And it's a zone four through nine. So that's pretty, that's pretty winter hardy. And they get these sweet little light pink blooms in the spring. And these are usually a part shade to shade loving plant. I think they, this variety is somewhat tolerant of sun, but it does say on the tag somewhere. I think I read this at one point, let's see. Yeah, provide shade in the South. We provide it shade here in high desert, even though we're a Northern climate, uh, we get some pretty intense heat throughout the summer. It's a dry heat too. So uh, usually providing this type with a little bit of shade is best and it's gonna get it right here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and just dig all five holes before I bring all the plants over because these are so big and they're a little bit top heavy that they're a little bit hard to manage. But I'm excited to see what these look like when they're all actually in the ground. Got all of the holes dug, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, and I somehow managed to miss all of the drip lines, which is amazing because we've got brown drip tubes going through this whole area, plus there's a main. You see that little black pipe right there? I almost hit it, but I didn't, which is such a relief. <laughs> My goodness. And sometimes I find it helpful to dig your holes first when you're dealing with plants this big and this full, because if you set your plants down and did it to where it was pleasing to the eye now, some of these plants might be bigger, like have more leaf growth on one side than the other, and you're not gonna actually center the root ball. You're centering how it visually looks at the moment, but it's not gonna look like that every single year. You know, they grow, things grow different every single year, especially perennials. So if you make sure to get the root ball centered, you're gonna have a much more pleasing look from year to year rather than centering it based on its look right now if that makes sense. But I do have biotone in all of the holes and I left my shovel back there in case I need to dig any of them a little bit wider or deeper or whatever, but I think I got them pretty close. And Paul and Bethany have not mulched up next to the house yet because of the house being painted, which, oh my goodness, they painted all of this menagerie of, of pipes and meter boxes, things like that. These were all like different colors and gray. I think I'm gonna do something else right here and then uh, build some sort of like, I don't know, some sort of something to mask the two units over here. But to have all of the stuff that's actually on the wall painted looks so good. And everything looks all fresh and tidy on the house as well. Oh, so thankful for that. Okay, let's get these in the ground. And there they are all planted. Don't they look great back here? I got them all watered in and it worked out really nicely because the fern that is coming up, I was able to dodge it and it's gonna come up right in the middle of this kind of trio right here. And eventually I can split these and I can start filling in you know, empty spaces so that this whole thing is full. Or if we like the way the fern looks, we could pop in more ferns in the little open spots like in between and have that fern foliage coming up above uh, the really bold foliage of the Virginia. And I was looking at these plants 
uh, determining whether or not I should split them at this point. And I decided that while I could have split these and uh, they would have stretched way further, I just didn't feel good about doing it at this stage of their growth because they were so big. They have so much leaf canopy to support. I feel like it would be a little bit of a better idea to let them do their thing this season. And then next spring, when I see them start to push new growth, I'll be able to better see where each division needs to be. And then, you know, the leaves won't be near as big. So I think it'll be less shock to the plant if I just hold off and wait. I, while it is tempting to split them so that I can fill this whole space in right away today, I think it'll be better for the plants to wait. Uh, now there are a couple other things I wanted to show you while we were up here. And those couple of things are the two varieties of lungwort that we have blooming. Uh, because I've showed you the pink of blue down here, which it's still rocking. It has been blooming for weeks weeks this plant is just amazing and we've got some columbine coming up behind them which i started from seed last year and planted them when they were tiny and so they really didn't do much so we're going to be able to see those blooms i can't even remember what color they are to be completely honest with you they might be pink most likely pink but you can see the size of the pink of blue it's a pretty good size perennial uh, this is the second year so we planted it here in this location just last year and i'm just so pleased the other variety, which is a little bit of an older variety, this one is called Spot On. And you can see a definite difference in the color of the foliage. And these are a little bit more of a dainty plant. These are older, but I did relocate these. They were underneath the crab apple up in the front yard before we took that flower bed out. Uh, so I dug them all up and moved them over here. And that's been some two or three years ago. So they've been in this spot for longer than the pink of blue has. And you can see that it's just a smaller growth habit, which some, sometimes you want that. And there's much more white. These are a way brighter variety. I mean, they just kind of glow in this spot. Like let's take, I'm gonna take a leaf that we won't miss. Let's take one over here. These just have a lighter color than the pink of blue. They're both gorgeous plants. I just love it though when I have good examples of a few different varieties to show the differences because sometimes you just can't tell based off of a tag. And you guys, that is gonna be it for today's project. So pleased with the mulch around the pond. Paul and Bethany, huge shout out to those two for doing such a beautiful job at whatever they're working on. They always do a beautiful job. And then I'm just excited about all the new plants that went in today. Uh, these Virginia, I mean, first time planting this variety for sure and starting with such huge ones. That's always a treat. And we'll report back on the Campanula, kind of let you know how I feel those are growing. I think I've got some Campanula right up here. I think it's the Birch Hybrid. Yeah, you can see how mine's doing versus the ones we just planted. So mine don't have any flower buds yet, but these just form a nice, there's another one right there, a nice little carpet in here and some beautiful purple flowers. And there's other lungwort in here as well. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye.